Okay, so this is a video that's gonna go over the simple uh, operation of an IMAX style four button charger. This is the B6AC and you have a few different buttons here, but first we're gonna plug it in. So you connect your AC adapter and this is what you'll see. So this is the battery type. This is the mode. This is the output and the charge rate. And then this is the kind of uh, battery that you are charging as far as the voltage range goes. And then these buttons are how you will change that. On the charger here, you have your balance connectors and then your output for charging. So you can see there's these white connectors here and then a couple four millimeter banana ports there. So the first thing to do is determine what kind of battery you have. So I'm gonna show a couple of examples. This is gonna be a common one that people use. So this is one of our lithium polymer battery packs receiver. This is a 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery. It's 7,000 milliamps. This is a different battery. So this is called a LIFE lithium ferrite. This is 2,300 milliamps, 6.6 .6 volts. So LIFE. This is another lithium polymer battery. This is a 7.4 volt two cell battery, 5,000 milliamps. So, so this is common for one tenth scale radio control cars. This is a much bigger battery. So this is a lithium HV. So it's similar to lithium polymer, except that these are a slightly higher voltage. This is another common battery. This is a six volt nickel metal hydride, so NIMH, 6.0 volts, 3000 milliamps. So the first thing to do when you are determining what you're charging is you're gonna determine what battery you have. So this is a LiPo battery, 7.4 volts, 7000 milliamps. So on this, you can see battery type if you tap that. So we're selecting LiPo battery. If you push start, that's how you will change your amp rate. If you push start again or the enter button, you'll see that the value for the cells are flashing. We're gonna move that down to two cell, 7.4 volts. Now you have a couple different modes. So now nothing is flashing. If I push this, you can see this is balance charging, fast charging, storage mode, discharge, charge. We're gonna balance charge. Balance charging is important. Balance charging is where you use these little white connectors here. So you can see this also carries the same balance connector. And once again, we are going to change the value for the voltage down to 2S. So once we have the charger set here, the next thing to evaluate is your battery connectors. So you can see this battery has three connectors. The reason it has three is very simple. This is your balance connector. These two connectors are identical. The reason that they are identical is because it's designed so that you can have one battery, one, one battery connector plugged into your on-off switch and another battery connector to be used for charging. It does not matter which one you choose to charge. You only use one to charge and one for your on-off switch. We'll go ahead and use the one that matches the length of the balance connector. You will need a connector like this that matches the battery charging connector. And this connector is an adapter. It will plug into the side. It's very simple. You have red, you have black. Black goes in black. Red goes in red. Here you can see your balance charging socket. This is your balance port. 
this is a two cell battery, it will go in here. It will only let you plug it into the one that it matches. Two, three, four, five, six. This is 7.4 volts. Once again, we have decided to choose this as our charging connector. You will plug those together. You can make sure that the red and the black line up. Now, we can determine how fast we want to charge the battery by changing the amp rate. This is going to be the output that you want to charge is going to be dependent on the connector that you're using. Some connectors can handle a higher charge rate, others cannot. For example, this is a pretty small connector. I generally charge a connector like this at three amps or less. A connector like this can handle much more, five, six amps quite easily. And then you have a connector like this, which is much bigger, much, much heavier gauge. This is designed for super high output. So let's go ahead and let's say we're going to charge it at two amps. So once, once we're certain that we know the battery connection, the battery type, everything's connected the way that we need it to be, you're going to select start and you're going to push and hold it. It's checking to make sure that you have a two, two cell series battery. If you confirm that, you're going to push enter. And then you're going to see this. So what this is telling you is that it's a lithium two cell battery. It's charging at two amps. This is the current voltage inside the battery. Your balance charging it. This shows you the elapsed time. This shows you the capacity that has been put into the battery in milliamps. This is a 7,000 milliamp battery, 7.4 volts. At peak voltage, a two cell lithium polymer battery is 8.4 volts. So it's 4.2 volts per cell is the maximum voltage so this would be 8.4 volts. So you can see we're at about eight volts now. So it's gonna fluctuate because the balance connector is balancing the two different cells. So what will happen is this is slowly gonna increase in voltage on its way up to 8.4 volts. As it gets closer to full capacity, you'll see the output begin to decrease because what it's doing is it's slowly topping off the battery. At any time, if you want to stop, you can simply push stop and then you're brought back to this screen. We'll di carefully disconnect your connectors and then you're done couple notes about charging and using proper precautions. This is an example of a lithium polymer charging bag. LiPo batteries can be, can hold a lot of energy and they are, they can be volatile if they're handled incorrectly. If your battery shows any signs of damage, puffing, swelling, if your connectors are not in good shape, you should discontinue using it and research on how to dispose of this correctly. This battery's in good shape, it doesn't need that. So for illustrative purposes, I have not put the battery into my charging bag because I wanted you to see how the connectors were going. There's other types of, there's other types of charging bags available. We stock our own here, they're pretty simple. They generally have a big Velcro strap. They got room on the side when it closes up so that you can have your connectors come out. Another thing about your battery and taking care of it. 
When you're not using your battery for an extended period of time, I would say within a week, you do not want to leave your battery fully charged. So you should put it in storage mode. Storage mode for a lithium polymer battery is about 60% capacity. This charger has the ability to correctly store a battery. So right here is storage. Now, if your battery is fully charged, this, this will discharge it down to 60%. If your battery was dead, it will increase the voltage to about 60%. So we're going to go... Now the maximum rate for the storage mode is 1.0 amps. We're going to do two cell. And once again, you'll pick a connector on this, on this battery. Again, it can be this one, it can be this one, but only choose one. Connect those there. Connect that to the balance port. Again, I would normally put this in a charging bag. Now if I push and hold this button, it's gonna confirm that it's a 2S battery. We're gonna push enter. What the charger will do is it will discharge this battery and lower the voltage down to a correct storage mode. So you want to have your battery in storage if you are not using it for an extended period of time. For myself, I generally do this if I'm not gonna be using the battery within a week. So I would put it in storage mode and in storage mode, the batteries can last an incredibly long time. When it's, when it's time to get it out and, and uh, operate your model again, it's really simple. You would just connect it, put it back on balance charge and hit go. You do not have to discharge a lithium polymer battery because li lithium polymer batteries don't require discharging and charging the way the old nickel cadmium batteries were. So you can see that this is slowly pulling down the voltage. You can see this is how many capacity, how many milliamps it's pulled out of the battery. This is the elapsed time and that is the discharge rate. So again, if it was say that this was at six and a half volts, it would actually charge it up. But because this is voltage is higher, it's going to discharge the battery at the moment to put it in storage. Just for illustrative purposes, I'm gonna show you another brand of charger that uses a very similar menu. This is the ProTech Prodigy 610EZ. So you can see. Okay, so once again, we can program select. We can select our battery. What kind of battery are we gonna use? We got lithium ion, lithium ferrite. So let's do that for fun. So we have a lithium ferrite battery, 2300 milliamp, 2S, six volt. We're gonna say it's two cell, 2300 milliamp. Now this has a little bit different setup. This has an external balance board, but it all still works exactly the same way. Just like that, it confirms charges and works exactly the same as the iMax charger. Once again, if I was charging this for a long period of time, I would use one of the charging bags. The charging bags are there to contain the battery uh, should it go up in flames, which is pretty uncommon personally. I've never experienced it in my 16 years of using lithium batteries in my radio control cars, but it is always a, it is a, possibility and so whenever you're charging a battery you always stay by your battery when it's charging you never leave it connected while you're while it's not charging uh, you should disconnect the battery uh, when it's completed charging store your battery in a safe location 
uh, when it's charging, just make sure that you are always near because it's, uh, it's a potential risk. Okay, so we're gonna stop this. We can show you a different kind of battery. So that was a lithium ferrite. Now this particular battery, so this is a four cell battery. This is lithium HV. So if you have a lithium HV battery, you do need a lithium HV charger. See this as a special mode for lithium HV. I have a different battery connector. So I'm gonna install that. It says the same exact layout. Got a red and black connectors on the side. These are the QS8 connectors. And because this is a four cell battery, you can see that it will connect down here. They are keyed and polarized. Now this is a 8200 milliamp battery. So you can see we're balance charging four cell. The capacity is 8300. The other thing that you can do on certain batteries like this particular one is that you can charge it at a higher capacity. I can charge it at a higher capacity because this battery is manufactured to be charger at a higher capacity and this battery connector can handle a much higher amp rate. So we can even increase this all the way up. So the highest that this charger will go is 10 amps. Now with the bigger battery, it does come with a bigger risk because they hold a lot more energy. So that again is why it's important to always use a charging bag and to always be nearby when your battery is charging. If the battery is damaged, if the connections are damaged, if the wires are damaged, you should discontinue use immediately and make sure to dispose of it properly. I hope that this answers a lot of questions that you guys might have about how you're supposed to charge and care for your batteries. If you have any questions, drop them below. Thanks.